three-year anniversary of Kobe Bryant's death in the helicopter crash in Calabasas, right next door to where I live right now. And John Brinkis, this segment is called Walk in My Shoes because we want to see, we want to hear what you felt in that moment when you heard that devastating news. What was your response? And I'll never forget that day. Um, I actually was very near there on the day that it happened. Um, I was staying up in uh, Westlake Village at the time, which is right next to Calabasas. I actually lived in the Oaks, which is mm. the backside of where Kobe's uh, helicopter crashed. It was in the backside of the Oaks, uh, which wow. is a, you know, a, you know, like a really big neighborhood in uh, Calabasas. And the first thought was, there's no way this is real. I mean, that's the first mm. thought. And there were conflicting reports going around. And, you know, I'm skeptical by nature. And when I heard the news, I'm like, there's no way it's true. Do you want to know why? Because I'm working with Kobe Bryant on a project right now. There's no way he died. Mm. Uh, Herbert, roll that clip. Wow. Um, we were doing a project with Mamba Sports Academy. I mean, that was literally shot just a few days, maybe a couple weeks before he died. And we were working on a project, um, really launching Mamba Sports Academy to the next level. And, you know, he was flying in on his helicopter. He lived down in Orange County. And so we'd go up and shoot and he would fly in. And I've been really fortunate because I've been around sports for so long. Kobe and I had been in different scenarios together so we kind of knew each other a little bit he wasn't a, a best friend by any means but we were friendly enough that you know he wanted to work with me i wanted to work with him we respected each other we knew each other a little bit and i just worked with him and when did when you found out that it was true to say my heart was broken my soul was mm. ripped you're just like this is one of the most important sports figures ever in the history of sports and he's gone it it, it, it was just total bewilderment honestly results. yeah unreal um and not only his daughter but seven other passengers all fatally killed in that moment and i remember exactly like to the second what was happening because i was actually going to the airport to take a flight so i'm saying goodbye to the kids and hugging the wife and then just looked at my phone and saw the alert. And sometimes, like you said, it just doesn't seem real. And I think it's largely because he was bigger than life. Even though I knew Kobe Bryant, I had worked with Kobe Bryant, I had seen Kobe Bryant, I've hung, I've done events with Kobe Bryant. This hit me in a different way because I was like, there's no way he's gone. And my first thought was a selfish athletic thought. I was like, there's no way he's dead when he spent 20 years playing basketball to set himself up to live after playing basketball. And it's cut that short and it just hit me. That was like a ton of bricks that hit me in the head because I couldn't imagine everything that I went through and on a much smaller scale, obviously, than Kobe Bryant but I still have my life to live. That's one of the things that you're holding your breath in terms of anticipation when you retire. I can live, right? I build up this dynasty, I build up this legacy, I build up my success, I get my money from it, and I translate it to the real life human experience. And I was like, that's not gonna happen for Kobe Bryant? And then you go through the, there's no way this is real, but everyone keeps telling you, oh, it's real. It's happening. And it was devastating in the way, I'll be candid with you guys, the, the toughest thing for me was Kobe and I were really cool. Like, he always used to say, you of all reporters, I like because you tell the truth. He's like, when I play bad, I check some cats out and they still trying to be the homie. He's like, you'll tell me, no, nah, no, nah, that wasn't right. And, you know, I had to cover the Lakers working at ESPN across the street from Staples Center when Kobe Bryant was coming down the hill, right? 
And I felt bad, not because Kobe didn't understand where I was coming from and our relationship, because he did. I felt bad because I think the public at times didn't understand how much I love Kobe Bryant. But as we were just talking about, if a Tim Brown is looking at the Raiders saying, I don't want Tom Brady, there are times where you have to actually look at an athlete for their performance, not just in their stature and greatness. That was the one thing I felt bad about. I was like, damn, I ain't clean that up. People don't, they don't know how much I love this dude. Um, But all things considered, man, in that moment, you said it best. It it was an out-of-world experience. There's no way I thought that what I was reading, what I was hearing, was actually based in reality. Yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, just my quick little Kobe Bryant stories, you know, I actually uh, did a thing with um, Kobe when he entered the league, and it was at Madison Square Garden, actually, where that was where he was posting up against MJ in the All-Star game. And, Mm. it like, I think he was 19. It, it, and I, I like, I'm like, he was either 19 or 20. He would like, he like, he was, he skipped college, came from high school. And if you remember, yeah. he, he was a wide eyed, like, what is going on? Oh my God. I'm surrounded by every superstar. And he was not like Mr. Swag or I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread when he was the, in his first year. And everybody was waiting to watch him post up against, against MJ. And he did awesome. And you're like, oh, my God. Then I remember his uh, – remember, he won years before he won his first championship yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. where people credited him. They were like, nah, he won it. Yeah, it was Shaq. It was Shaq. It was Shaq. And he's yeah. like, bruh, like, I'm on the roster. Don't overlook me here. Then yeah. he has the whole stuff that happened in Colorado where it, when everybody wants to look at Kobe Bryant, look at the whole person. There has never been a higher profile athlete, politician, celebrity who handled the situation in terms of a PR front better by saying, yes, I sinned. I did not commit a crime and I am Mm. not going to let this slide. And how he went back and forth between Eagle, Colorado and the Staples Center to play, you're like, How in the world does he do that? And that really is, I think, where the black mamba mentality came in to filter it all out, focus, and be a superhero. And I did it, I did a project um, with Nike about how superstars, especially, have to form this persona because they have to transcend being a normal person. So the black mamba was like this superhero uniform. And then when you get off the court, You got to take that off and be human. And if there was ever an athlete, high profile athlete who loved his family more, I don't know who it was because he was with his kids all the time, not for a photo op, not to say, look at me, because he really wanted to be with his family and his view on females, on uh, girls playing sports with boys was Mm. identical to mine. I had put out this this, uh, TED talk. And he was backing it up. And I, I was just blessed to just even know him um, and work with him a little bit like I did. Miss him. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy you say it like that because I know someone is sitting there eye rolling right now. A little sappy for me, a little too glowing. But if you knew him, you would know that these things are real. And it's funny because I got to meet him my rookie year because he's younger than me, but he was in the league a year before me. And we were at Cedric Sabalos' house, right? Remember Cedric Sabalos from the Lakers, right? This is how long ago this is, like 97. And we went, heard that we went to, time. this is the pool party. Like Cedric Sabalos, LA yeah. pool party, epic. Like can't get in people, right? Like shuttle buses everywhere and, and, and porta potties. Like it's next level, right? And I remember going in there and I was hanging with a bunch of guys, including Kobe. And by the end of the party, we all leaving, and I'm pumped. I'm like, oh, I got 19 numbers. I'm about to call them all or text them, whatever the hell we were doing with them old sky pagers and flip phones. I'm like, I'm about, oh, I'm in the zone. And I remember Kobe looking at me. He said, man, I'm out, and I ain't coming back. Like, it was overwhelming to him. He was like, this ain't it, bro. And then when I would see him, it was always like somewhere chill or like Orange County. He's just like, man, forget it. I'm out. I'm off the circuit, right? And his image, you know, he was the McDonald's kid and dated Brandy or went on her prom date, whatever. Like he had this perfect image. And then all of a sudden, Colorado hit. 
And when Colorado hit, two things I noticed because I was privy to the knowledge on the inside. One was, oh, man, like you said, he sinned, but in his eyes and in the eyes of many who know that situation, oh, he didn't commit a crime, right? And that was a situation where everyone knew of reputation to go to the hotel, talk to this girl, and she likes basketball. Let's just say that, right? And then that turned sideways. Okay, no one was in the moment, so no one could truly verify it, but that went sideways, right? But the greater point is what you said. Kobe Bryant came out of that with a different persona, protection, armor. And then you know the whole Black Mamba, which he stole from the homie DeAnthony Thomas, who went to Crenshaw in Oregon, played in the league. This little kid was actually Black Mamba. Kobe like, yo, you ain't famous enough yet. Give me that nickname. Took it. Snoop Dogg can verify that story. I digress. But he got a new nickname. He got the Black Mamba protection. And that was just go at it at all costs. Why? Because Kobe Bryant had to go from one extreme where I could do no wrong to one extreme where you see I do no right. And that's happening to one human being inside their vessel inside their mind and he's like the only way to deal with it is to give them that cover so all of those things added up to Kobe Bryant just being this guy who seemed like he was the ultimate villain but he was so likable if you could consider Colorado in a different light that he balanced it out like remarkably he wasn't so killer that all of a sudden he wasn't a girl dad you know he wasn't so killer that every teammate despite them not liking him had to respect him and to me that is a fine line to walk but kobe bryant did it brilliantly it's just sad i mean it's sad because i'm you know like when you think of someone and you go, you know, I was really glad I got to meet him, or I'm really glad I have those memories. He wasn't old enough for me to say, I'm really glad he's gone. Like, I'm not. Mm. Like, that guy was, that guy mm. impacted so many people. And the Mamba Sports Academy was, it, he really wanted that to be his legacy. It was like, you know what, I'm going to give this amazing sports academy, and I want that to be my legacy, and, and have it live on. I, I just miss him. I, I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it still, it still doesn't seem real. It, it doesn't seem real. And I tell you the thing that brings me to like a real emotional place, and it happens all the time. I put myself in position of those who I know that I've lost or suffered. Um, I lost my best friend when I was 11, and there's not a day that goes by when my son wants to ride his bike because my best friend who died got hit by a car on his bike that I'm not thinking about someone's going to come hit my son on his bike not giving him the full freedom he deserves because I'm scarred. And there's not a time that when I have to take a flight, I was just in Atlanta to see you. And people are like, dog, you don't like to travel much. And I'm like, it's not just because I don't want to land and have fun and do my work. It's because I don't want to leave my family. Kobe Bryant took a routine helicopter ride and never came back. So every time I travel, man, and it's the worst experience, emotionally, I'm like, I said goodbye to my family. But will that be the ultimate goodbye, you know? And I just hate going to those places, but I really do. And no matter what, when Kobe Bryant comes to my mind, I just think about all those that, not us as much, and now we feel it too, but his daughters, his wife, and that's like the family. And to have your dad be borrowed by the world for all that time, and finally you got him to yourself, and you still don't have him. That's unreal.